In this video, I'm going to show you how to prove or disprove Big O. So we're going to start off with this problem, which is prove that 2n plus 3 is all of n. It's very important to understand what they want you to do. So here we have a graph. The x-axis is the input size, and the y-axis is basically the time. And here we have our function 2n plus 3. And when they want you to prove that it is all of n, we just want to show that there is a function c times n, where c is just a number that grows faster than our red line. So all we have to do, again, is to find one function, c times n, that grows faster than this line. And of course, you're going to intersect here, and this point is called n naught. So you might be wondering, can we just pick c to be 3? because a slope of 3 will grow faster than a slope of 2? And the answer is absolutely yes. But there is a standard way to find c, and I'm going to show you how to do it. We know that 2n plus 3 is less than 2n plus 3n, and that's because the 3 is less than 3n. Now we have 2n plus 3 is less than 5n. So our 5 is basically our constant c. Now, what is n naught going to be? We can try to substitute n naught is equal to 1. We always start at 1, and let's see. So we put 1 into the inequality. We have 2 times 1 plus 3, which is less than 5 times 1. So 5 is less than 5. This is correct. So our n naught is going to be 1. If you plug in the 1 and this inequality is not true, you can just increase n0 to 2 and try it again until you find one that works. And that's basically it. We're just going to say, therefore, 2n plus 3 is all of n, since 2n plus 3 is less than or equal to 5 times n, so we found our c for n is greater or equal to 1. The official definition of big O is that f of n is O of g of n, if we can find a positive constant c, can be a number or a decimal, and a positive integer and not, such that this inequality is true. So f of n is always smaller or equal to c times g of n. So as you can see here, f of n is always smaller than c times g of n, starting from n naught and onwards. And the reason why here there is a greater than zero is because we want both of these functions to be above the horizontal axis. Proof that 2n plus 3 is o n squared. And you might say, wait a minute, we just showed that 2n plus 3 is all of n. How can it be o n squared? The answer is yes, it can be. And let me show you why. To show that this function is o n squared, we just find a function c times n squared that grows faster than our red function starting from n naught. And of course, you can pick c to be 1, because a quadratic function always grows faster than a linear function, but we want to find c using the standard way. So 2n plus 3 is less than or equal to 2n squared plus 3n squared. And this makes sense because 2n squared is larger than 2n, and 3n squared is larger than 3. So we have 2n plus 3 is less than or equal to 5 times n squared. And what is our n naught going to be? We can try when n naught is equal to 1, is this inequality true? And you will find that yes, this inequality is true when you plug n is equal to 1. Last but not least, we always write our conclusion. So by definition, or therefore, 2n plus 3 is o n squared, since 2n plus 3 is less than or equal to 5n squared, or n is greater or equal to 1. So we just established the fact that 2n plus 3 is o n squared, but it can also be all of n. And on the test, a question might ask you, which one is the tightest big O? So which one do we choose? The tightest big O is the answer that is the closest to our original function, which is all of n. So this right here will be the answer. I also want to show you the fast way to find the tightest big O of a function. So what is the tightest big O of this function here? Well, the first step is to get rid of constants. So you get rid of constants like these ones, like 11. And now the second step is to choose the largest term. So out of these three terms, which one is the largest? You have n to the power of 3, you have log of n, and n squared. Well, of course, this one will be the largest. So you get rid of these ones. 
And the last step is simply get rid of the coefficient. And now you know that this function is going to be o n to the power of 3. A kind of a special case is when you only have a constant. So if it's only a number, then this will automatically be considered o of 1. So how can we know which function is larger than which one? You can look at this list here. So the top function is the one that is the largest or grows the fastest, and the bottom one is the smallest or grows the slowest. On the test, I always write down, nowadays, fascinating experiments push new limits, scientific learning and creativity. So the C stands for constant, the L stands for logarithmic, the S is for square root, the L is for linear functions, this N is for n log n, the p is for polynomials such as n to the power of 3, n to the power of 4, and this e is for exponential such as 2 to the power of n, and f, guess what, it's for factorial, and the last n is n to the power of n. So this is a trick that I use to memorize this list. Prove that 2n plus 3 is not all of 1. Intuitively, this is what all of 1 looks like. So this is c times 1, and it's always under our red function. So let's go ahead and increase the c and see what happens. So even if we make c an extremely large number, like 999, at some point, the red function will intersect the green function and grow faster than the green function. So that's how we know that 2n plus 3 is not all of 1, and that is exactly what we want to prove. We're going to use proof by contradiction. So let's say we want to prove the statement p. The first step is to negate it and suppose the opposite. And don't worry, I'll show you an example in a moment, but suppose b not, and then show that p not leads to a contradiction. For example, we want to prove that a box containing three cookies is not empty. So the first step is to negate the statement. So suppose the box is empty. So what does that mean? It means that you won't be able to pull anything out of the box, right? But then when I reach my hand into the box, I'm able to pull out a cookie. So that contradicts with our initial assumption. And because of that, we know that the box is not empty. Let's go ahead and prove this. So first step, suppose that 2n plus 3 is all of 1. Then by definition, there exists a positive constant c and a positive integer n naught such that 2n plus 3 is less than or equal to c times 1 for all n is greater or equal to n naught. Already you see something that doesn't make sense. So here c1 is just a constant, right? And over here 2n plus 3 is a linear function. So how can a linear function be less than a constant? It's supposed to be the other way around, so this is a contradiction. Therefore, this here is a contradiction as 2n plus 3 grows infinitely. So it cannot be bounded by a constant, meaning that it cannot be less than or equal to a constant. Thus, 2n plus 3 is not all of 1. Prove that 2 to the power of n plus 2 is O of 2 to the power of n. So our goal is to find a constant c and a constant n naught such that this inequality here is true. We know 2 to the power of n plus 2 is equal to 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of 2, right? So this would give us 4 times 2 to the power of n. Now we found a constant 4, so this means 2 to the power of n plus 2 is less than or equal to 4 times 2 to the power of n. And this makes sense because this is an equal sign, so this is less than or equal to, so that's okay. We also need to find an n naught. So we can try let n naught equal to 1. And if this doesn't work, then we can increase it to 2, to 3, etc. So plugging in n is equal to 1, we have 2 to the power of 1 plus 2, which is 3, which is less than 4 times 2 to the power of 1. So this is 8 less than 8. And since this is true, what we're going to do is say that this inequality is true for n is greater than 1. Don't forget to write the conclusion. So by definition, therefore, 
2 to the power of n plus 2 is O of 2 to the power of n. Since 2 to the power of n plus 2 is less than or equal to 4 times 2 to the power of n, or n is larger or equal to 1. Proof that 5n squared plus 3n log n plus 2n plus 5 is O n squared. So this right here is less than or equal to 5n squared plus 3n squared. And this is because 3n squared is larger than n log n. And we'll talk about this in a moment. Then plus 2n squared. So this right here makes sense because 2n squared is larger than 2n. And also 5n squared is larger than 5. Adding all the constants on the right side, we have 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5, which is 15 n squared. So we found a constant c, which is good. We just need to find n naught. Let's try n naught is equal to 1. So plugging in here, 5 times 1 squared, which is 5, plus 3 times 1 is 3, times log of 1. And log of 1 is 0, therefore this is just 0, plus 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 5, and is this less than 15 times 1, right? So we have 12, and that is indeed less than or equal to 15. If you look at this graph here, all of n log n grows slower than n to the power of c, and this is polynomial, such as n to the power of 2, n to the power of 3, and so on. Just remember that n log n is always smaller than polynomial. And if you want the proof of this, you can check out my video on the limit criterion. By definition, we conclude that 5n squared plus 3n log n plus 2n plus 5 is indeed O n squared, because all of this is less than or equal to 15n squared, for all n is greater than or equal to 1. Proof that the summation from 1 to n is O n squared. So this summation here is equal to 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 until n, and if you remember the formula, this is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to n squared plus n divided by 2, which is 1 over 2 n squared plus 1 over 2 n. So this right here is less than or equal to 1 over 2 n squared plus 1 over 2 n squared. And that's because 1 over 2 n squared is larger than 1 over 2 n. So this is less than or equal to both of these plus together is n squared. And we can think of it as a 1 times n squared. So we found our constant c, and c is going to be 1. Let n naught equal to 1 and see if this inequality is true. So plugging in 1, we have this is just 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, and that is less than 1 times 1. And as you can see, this right here is true. Thus. The sum from 1 to n is O n squared, because this right here is less than or equal to 1 times n squared, for all n is greater than or equal to 1. Proof that sine of x is all of 1. So our goal is to show that there is a constant c and n naught such that this inequality here is true. If you remember from high school, the sine graph always alternates between 1 and negative 1, just like this. So since sine of x is always less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to negative 1, for x in the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, then we can find the constant c. So here, so sine of x is less than a constant c and let c equal to 1 times 1. And this one here is from this one. Okay, and then let and not, or actually, I mean x, let x not equal to 1, because we're using x, not n here. So plugging in sine of 1 is approximately 0 0.84, if you put it in the calculator. So this would be 0 0.84, which is indeed less than or equal to 1. And really, the last step is the conclusion. So therefore, sine of x is all of 1, when c is equal to 1, and x not equal to 1 so that the inequality sine of x is smaller or equal to c times 1 for all x is greater than or equal to x naught. Proof that 10 times the ln of n squared is O log n. So our goal is to find a c and an n naught such that this inequality is always true. 
using the log rules, we know that 10 times ln of n square, we can bring the 2 out here. So we have 10 times 2 ln of n. So this would give us 20 ln of n. So the ln is really just log base e. So 20 log base e of n. And in computer science, whenever we say O of log n, we mean base 2. So we can convert the e into a 2. Now, if you remember the log rule, log base b of a, this is the same as log base c of a over log base c of b. Let c equal to 20 over log base 2 of e. So this means that 10 times the ln n squared is less than or equal to 20 over log base 2 of e log base 2 of n. And this works because this is equal to this, so it also means that it can be less than or equal to this. Let n not equal to 1. So plugging 1 into the n here, we have 10 times the ln of 1 squared. And the ln of 1 is 0, so we have 0 over here. And the same thing over here, so log base 2 of n, where n is 1, this will be 0. So this inequality is true. And by definition, 10 ln of n squared is O log n, as this is less than 20 over log base 2 of e times log of n, or n is greater than or equal to 1. Proof that 5 to the power of n is not O of 4 to the power of n. Suppose that 5 to the power of n is O of 4 to the power of n. Then there exists a positive constant c and a positive integer n naught such that the inequality 5 to the power of n is less than or equal to c times 4 to the power of n, or n is greater than or equal to n naught. Now, we're going to show that this leads to a contradiction or something that doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's divide both sides by 4 to the power of n. We have 5 to the power of n divided by 4 to the power of n, and that's less or equal to c times 4 to the power of n over 4 to the power of n, which is just 1. Now, there is a rule that says if you have a to the power of b over c to the power of b, then you will have a over c and the entire thing to the power of b. Let's transform this one using the rule. We have 5 over 4 to the power of n, and 5 over 4 is just 1.25 to the power of n, and that is less than or equal to c. So this is a contradiction because 1.25 to the power of n is an exponential function, and an exponential function cannot be less than a constant, right? It's supposed to be the other way around. And we're going to write this is a contradiction as 1.25 to the power of n grows infinitely, so it cannot be bounded by a constant. And because of this, 5 to the power of n is not O of 4 to the power of n. So that's basically it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you haven't already. And in the next video, I will show you how to prove big omega and big theta.